Israel is the startup nation, pioneering tech for the world, yet stuck in gridlock so severe that the economy loses nearly $9 billion to traffic every year. Now comes a $50 billion gamble, a metro so massive it promises to transform Tel Aviv, or it could risk tearing the city apart. But why did it take 70 years? And what dangers lurk beneath this urgent fix? Tel Aviv is famous for its energy and innovation, but on the streets, progress comes to a halt. Every morning, the city's highways turn into parking lots. The OECD ranks Israel's traffic congestion near the very worst among developed economies. It is not just an annoyance, it is a multi-billion dollar drag. Each year, gridlock drains billions from the economy, pushing up the cost of living and cutting into productivity. The numbers are staggering. Tel Aviv's traffic adds about 6% to the already steep gap between Israeli and European living costs. The city that leads the world in cybersecurity and artificial intelligence loses more money to traffic than it spends on many national programs. For decades, governments promised relief, but delivered little. Plans for a subway have come and gone since the 1960s, always falling victim to budget fights, shifting priorities, and a deep-rooted love affair with the private car. Instead, Israel built nuclear reactors, desalination plants and missile shields, everything but a metro. The result is a modern superpower with third-world commutes. Now, the pressure to fix this is not just about comfort. It is about survival in a global economy where time lost in traffic is opportunity lost forever. The solution on the table isn't just a subway. It's a complete overhaul of how a city moves. The Tel Aviv Metro is planned as a $50 billion circulatory system, stretching up to 200 kilometers beneath Greater Tel Aviv. Three massive lines form the backbone, M1, M2, and M3. M1 is the powerhouse, a north-south artery spanning nearly 85 kilometers, built to carry waves of commuters from the far suburbs straight into the city's core. M2 cuts east to west, connecting dense neighborhoods directly to the Mediterranean, making crosstown trips possible in minutes instead of hours. It is the beach connector that will finally make moving across the city feel effortless. M3 loops around as a semi-ring, linking tech parks, hospitals, and the airport so people can move between the outer districts without crawling through the center. Together, these lines are engineered to move 2 million passengers every day, enough to rival the busiest systems in Europe. Two million is the scale this city needs. The ambition is staggering. What cities like London and Paris built over more than a century, Israel aims to deliver in just 15 years. 15 years is an extraordinary pace for a project of this complexity. The numbers are almost hard to believe. A network of 109 stations, hundreds of trains, and a price tag that dwarfs every other project in the country's history. Beneath Tel Aviv's energy and chaos lies a fragile foundation. The city's heart, known as the White City, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, home to over 4,000 Bauhaus-era buildings. These structures, built in the 1930s from early concrete with shallow footings, are celebrated for their clean lines and sunlight, yet they are brittle, aging, and prone to cracking. Running a tunnel boring machine the size of a city bus beneath this architectural museum is like threading steel through glass. Even the smallest ground movement can send vibrations up through the soil, threatening to shatter walls that have stood for nearly a century. The Municipal Conservation Unit watches every step with engineers and preservationists locked in a daily standoff. For every meter of tunnel, sensors are planted 
like medical monitors, tracking the tiniest shifts in the earth. The ground itself refuses to cooperate. Tel Aviv sits on layers of Kirkar, cemented sandstone that crumbles unpredictably, sandwiched between soft sand and clay. It is a geotechnical puzzle. Too much pressure and the earth buckles, too little and the tunnel face collapses. In 2022, the dangers became real. A massive sinkhole opened on the Ayalon Highway, swallowing part of one of Israel's busiest roads. The cause was water and unstable soil disturbed by tunneling. No one was hurt, but the incident sent shockwaves through the city. The lesson was clear. In Tel Aviv, the ground is not a blank canvas. It is a minefield, and every advance underground risks both the city's future and its past. The real digging doesn't start underground, it starts in court. Before a single tunnel can be carved, the state has to claim the land for 109 stations, ventilation shafts, and emergency exits. But this isn't empty space. It's prime Tel Aviv real estate, and every square meter is already spoken for. The government uses eminent domain to seize what it needs, but that triggers a legal avalanche. Developers and landowners argue the tunnels don't just pass beneath their property. They set a permanent limit on what can ever be built above. If you can't drop deep foundations, you can't build a skyscraper. That's the so-called concrete ceiling. And in a city obsessed with vertical growth, it's a direct hit to the bottom line. The result is a projected $1.7 billion in legal battles with hundreds of lawsuits piling up in planning committees and district courts. Every claim is a battle over lost potential, future towers, underground parking, or the right to cash in if zoning laws change. The state counters that public benefit outweighs hypothetical losses, and that compensation should be based on what's actually lost, not what might have been. To speed things up, the Knesset passed a special metro law designed to fast-track expropriations and cap payouts. Instead, it's created a new legal battleground. Lawyers comb through every clause, searching for loopholes and leverage, Developers form coalitions, pooling resources to challenge the state's valuations and deadlines. Each appeal, each delay, threatens to push the opening date further into the future. In Tel Aviv, the deepest obstacles aren't made of stone, they're made of paperwork. International contractors once lined up for Israeli infrastructure projects but the Tel Aviv metro has become a diplomatic minefield. Chinese state-owned companies built tunnels and supplied trains for the city's red line, proving they had the muscle for mega projects. But now, the world's biggest construction firms are watching from the sidelines. The United States has spent years urging Israel to keep China out of critical infrastructure, warning that software backdoors or remote kill switches could make a subway as vulnerable as a data center. Washington's message is clear. A metro system running beneath Israel's economic heart cannot be left open to foreign control, especially from Beijing. The result is a bidding process shaped as much by embassies as by engineers. Tender rules quietly discourage Chinese participation, while Israeli officials travel to Europe, India, and South Korea hoping to build a coalition of the willing. But new partners have their own worries. Some European and American firms hesitate to send teams into a region where war can break out overnight and supply lines can be severed by missile fire. Every contractor weighs not just risk and reward, but the politics of being seen on the wrong side of a global rivalry. 
In the end, the fight over who gets to dig Tel Aviv's tunnels is as much about alliances and power as it is about concrete and steel. Every decision in the Tel Aviv Metro project circles back to a single bet. That technology can outpace chaos. The entire system is being built for what engineers call Go A4, grade of automation four. There will be no drivers, no conductors. Trains will run themselves, waking up before dawn, running safety checks, sliding through tunnels and sinking with the city's heartbeat, all from a control center buried deep underground. In theory, this allows trains to arrive every 90 seconds, matching the world's most advanced metros. That's how you move 2 million people a day through a city that can barely handle its own rush hour. But the promise of autonomous operation comes with its own risks. Every subsystem, signaling, braking, even the ventilation, must talk to a central brain. If anything in that chain fails, the entire network freezes. The systems division, a team of software engineers and security experts, is tasked with building a fortress against cyber attacks and system failures. They work in the shadow of global headlines, ransomware shutting down pipelines, foreign code sleeping inside critical infrastructure. Deadlines loom. Officially, the first trains are supposed to roll out by 2034, but with every delay, that date slips closer to 2040. The gamble is clear. Can Israel deliver a fully autonomous metro before the city's gridlock chokes off its future? Or will the promise of seamless automation become just another stalled train waiting for the signal to turn green? Right now, Tel Aviv's metro exists as blueprints and battlefields, legal, political, and literal. The real test is not technology. It is whether a nation can unite beneath its own streets. Infrastructure shapes destinies. In cities that dare to dig, the future is decided underground. What would you risk to build tomorrow?